Good afternoon, Whisperers. Happy Friday and come on in. Welcome to Grown Talk Cocktail Fridays. My name is Sonia Luray, your host for this fabulous hour. I am a certified lifestyle relationship counselor, motivational speaker, and educator. Well, you know, today is a little different for us because this is a recording. What? I know. Don't be upset. Listen, I have to tell you why I'm recording this and I'm not with you all live today. Well, as you know, I'm the president and CEO of La Paz Image Consultants, where everything is fabulous. Well, guess what? It is our 20th anniversary. I am so excited. We are having a huge event today to celebrate our 20th anniversary. And tomorrow, which is Saturday, uh, September the 12th, that's our actual anniversary date. We're having another event. And so, of course, I could not miss being here today and to chop it up with you and to really get into this great topic. But before we do, you know how I like to start the hour off with a little cocktail mocktail. Today, I have a very nice peach iced tea. It is so good. So I tell you, I didn't give a cocktail today because it is a recording, but next week I have a fabulous cocktail for you all that you don't want to miss. So before we start, let me introduce myself totally to you. My name is Sonia Luray, and I am the host of Grown Talk Cocktail Fridays at Whispers in a Bottle underscore podcast live here on Instagram, Blog Talk Radio, as well as Zoom. And this month, September, is a very important month for me because it's Blood Cancer Awareness Month. And as part of a part of my family knows and everyone else who is a part of our family I lost both of my nieces five years ago to AML, acute myeloid uh, lymphoma, leukemia, excuse me. And um, literally it was such a jolt in our family that uh, we really didn't know how we were gonna go on without the girls. And they were young and so beautiful, vibrant. And I always, I always say I credit them with making me the best mom for my little girl because they were just my everything. And so with that being said, this month is, of course, our kickoff for October, which October 23rd is the first ever virtual Light the Night with the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. This is where uh, family members that have uh, lost loved ones to uh, blood cancer or to leukemia or lymphoma or families that are in the middle of their fight, or those that have won out on their battle and are in recovery, we get to light lanterns for those in their, in their memory to celebrate them and to also to bring attention to this beautiful, uh, noteworthy cause. So I would like for you all to please, please, please donate to my fundraiser I've been commissioned this year to raise literally $350, which is one of the lowest amounts that we've ever had to raise. And I need your help more than anything. And I also would love for you to mark your calendars for October 23rd, uh, 2020, to join me uh, in the Light the Night ceremony. Please, um, I'm gonna put all the details at the bottom of this video so you can uh, click on the link. You can donate as well as join my team so we can have a fabulous event and to have Desiree and Eleanor remembered. Um, they were two fabulous, beautiful young ladies. I'm gonna show you a picture here. This was at my wedding, actually. This is the oldest one. Her name is Desiree and she was an aspiring chef. And the youngest one here, Eleanor, just, full of life, just so uh, amazing. They both were just, oh my goodness. She worked in veterinary medicine and they just had such bright futures. And so it's been a challenge for us in this five years. And 
even now, like trying to tell you all, it's very touching to me. So I just would hope that you all would join my team. If not join, please donate. We need the money and we need the money for research as well as helping family members that are traveling back and forth to the hospital, family members that literally their patients need certain things. The Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, they give so freely to them that it's just, it's really heartwarming. So with that being said and that put on out there, we're going to kind of turn the table to our discussion today on valuing self. Why? Why should you value yourself? You know, this is such a very important topic. And literally, I've heard so many of my clients and uh, different ones talking about how stressed they are at this time. You know, with COVID, everything has really changed. And people are faced with so much from uh, not working or maybe working so differently now from home, having a different structure, the mask that they have to wear on a daily basis to go out, the deep sanitizing that you have to do just to go out your home to get back in your home safely. Your children are not able to socialize freely with their friends or their family members. They're doing maybe homeschool or having to think about, are they going to return to school? And how is that going to look for them? And how is that going to be for them? But in all of that, there's a lot of times what we do is we neglect ourselves and we forget to take time to value ourselves. And I thought it was very important today to discuss, you know, eight ways to love, to cherish and value yourself. And one of the first things that I, I want to start off with is that you never want to compare yourself to anyone else. And the biggest thing is that people sometimes on social media, they're looking at other people, they seem to like be living their best life and just kind of like carefree, even at this in this COVID situation. But the one thing you have to remember that your journey is different from anyone else's journey. And what you're strong at and what you face may be something that someone else cannot. So never look at that person or another person's cup because you may say that it's full, but they really could be empty. I know that recently there was a young man who has was a social influencer and unfortunately he passed away and what we found out is that he was very depressed and seeing his social media profile and everything that he was doing, you would never, never think that. And you would think that he was just really just enjoying himself and living so free, but that just was not the case. And uh, come to speaking with the family that he compared himself often to others which uh, led to a greater form of depression. So we have to be careful and be mindful of that because you can only live the best you because everyone else is taken. And if you don't learn to love you first, you're not gonna have the value that you need. And so that brings us into don't worry about being accepted by others. A lot of times that's what many people look for is acceptance. And as humans, that is a natural thing for us. We want to be accepted. We want to be loved, but not at the value or price of losing yourself and losing oneself. I always know like my mom, she always gave me great advice about never to lose yourself because you will not be able to regain it. And once you lose yourself, it's the hardest thing to find your pathway back because everything that was the element of you has disappeared. And that's a very sad situation because when you have to live in a pretense, it's such a hard thing because eventually you're gonna to have to give it up because you're not gonna be able to sustain it. So being honest with oneself and being authentic is a major thing. You need to recognize um, your self-worth as a human being. And that's number three, 
because recognizing your own self-worth helps other people to see your value. Because if you can't accept yourself for who you are, no one else will. And I know like um, dealing with my clients, I have several clients that they had to come to love themselves and love who they were and who they are because it was such an innate thing of always looking or feeling that they weren't fitting in some kind of status quo or or some kind of ability of seeing themselves the way that others saw them. But when you can accept yourself and you can value that, it's so beautiful because it helps you to realize that things that make you, you are just incredibly satisfying. And yes, we always need to work on ourselves. So don't think that you're perfect because you're not. And, but it does mean that number four, do the best with what you have, regardless of your circumstance. No matter what your circumstance is, always do your best at what you have. Don't give less than yourself or less than 100 of yourself when you're doing it, because literally you'll see that you're depriving yourself of so much. I know for myself, I do give all of myself to many things because I want people to realize that I'm invested in the things that I believe in. Just like when it came to the lymphoma and the leukemia society, I really invested myself because I wanted this journey and I wanted this to mean more to me than just a mere thing of like, I'm just doing this and I, I'm driven because my niece is, yes, it is because of my niece's passing, but it's also because I care for other individuals. And by doing this, it also brings forth a happiness inside of me and it brings forth a value that I could never really tell you because it's helping other people in need and being selfless at it. And so with that being said, it brings us to number five, to focus on serving and helping others. Because when you help others freely and you give of yourself freely, it gives you a joy that's beyond compare. It makes you realize that there's more to this life than just the mere scope of what's in your circle. So if you find that you are more or less kind of like empty or you don't have certain things or values placed in there or you're not really um, doing anything to help someone, maybe you should really look into how you can give back. Um, maybe it's reading stories to children online because there's a lot of kids that need stories read to them or maybe to have a Zoom luncheon with older ones in nursing homes. I know right now a lot of nursing homes, they're hosting luncheons for the elderly. And if you have a talent or maybe you have a great experience or something that can enrich their lives, they're really looking forward to having them take a part of it. And it's something that will give back more than just taking. And so number six is live life moment to moment. I am a firm believer, and I know you all know, and I you hear this all the time from me. Celebrate your small accomplishments. When you celebrate your small accomplishments, oh my goodness, you find such joy in the things that you achieve, the things that you have going for yourself. Um, I know for myself, I am celebrating this major milestone in my life of literally being in this industry 20 years. But every day I celebrate certain things with regards to myself, celebrating uh, my child, my husband, my family in certain ways, accomplishing things that you never could believe you could accomplish. But giving yourself the okay to say, hey, I did pretty good with this. Give yourself a little pat on the back. It's not boasting, it's not bragging, but it is celebrating the things that you accomplish. And many times as people, we don't do that. We brush by everything because we're always on to the next or we have so much that we're trying to accomplish that we forget to really just take the moment to say, hey, 
I did a pretty good job with that. I'm, I'm proud of myself. You know what? You deserve this. And reward yourself. Don't be afraid to reward yourself. Um, number seven is pursue a worthy dream. Oh my goodness. Dreams are incredible. Dreams are so important and valuable in our lives. If you don't set a dream for yourself, or if you don't set something out for you to achieve, you just don't know what you're missing. You don't know what you're really capable of doing. Because when you value yourself and you set those dreams, it's setting you up for an accomplishment. It's setting you up for that celebration. Don't forget, celebrate every moment. But it's also important because if you can dream it, you can accomplish it. And a lot of times as young people, they're such dreamers. They think of great things. They want to accomplish great things. It doesn't matter if it's just the most outlandish idea, um, a child who says, I want to be an astronaut, but it's in their heart. And so they go forth of doing certain things and you may be a, so surprised. Yes, they may not be an astronaut, but they may work at NASA or they may work somewhere that it's making some kind of hope and dream in them come true. Same for adults. At times we forget that we need to dream that we need to stop for a moment and focus on the happier things. Even if it's a dream just so slight of like, I'm going to learn how to make a special dish. Maybe it's some elaborate dish that you saw on the Food Network or some, or, or some occasion that you went to and you tried it and it just blew your mind. Set that as a goal, set that as your dream run after it and achieve it. You may be shocked what you achieve. The last thing is rejoice in your uniqueness. Be uniquely yourself. Because let me tell you something, I'm uniquely myself and I love it. <laughs> I really do. Um, one thing I have always been celebrated by my family by being so unique. I was able to uh, find my voice at a young age because I had parents that allowed me to be me. I had my closest friend, which was my brother, who celebrated me for me, as unique as Sonia Larey is. And I'm a true artist in that sense. And so I'm a little, as they say, a little unique in itself. And I'm proud of that fact. And I'm proud of the fact that if you can celebrate the uniqueness of you, oh my goodness, you will be so shocked how wonderful that is. I always feel like there is such beauty in the difference of people, the unique ways that each individual brings into their life. The energy that flows from each person is just beyond words. I think like we start to forget that we have that power and that ability to be so unique and so profound as people because we're so caught up in just, you know, the mundane things of life. And that's one of the things that I feel like when you celebrate that unique way how you are, it is contagious. And when you become contagious, it just it just goes from one person to the next person to the next person to the next. So don't look at all your flaws. Don't look at all your faults because we all have them. But when we start to value ourselves, oh my goodness, it is incredible because it has such a worth that most people would just not believe. You couldn't even put a price tag on the value that you have as a person. People could not afford you if you really put a value on yourself. 
So remember that you are worthy of celebrating yourself. You are worthy of having a little you time. You are worthy of being uniquely yourself because you're beautiful. Every person has something grand about them. I don't know. You may have an ability to sing or to dance or to say things that are so uplifting or you're so your diplomacy but it's the uniqueness in you that is celebrated so greatly never allow anyone to dim your light never allow anyone to take that value from you because once you allow that you will see that it is so hard for you to go back from that so if you don't take away anything but this Celebrate your accomplishments, be uniquely yourself, and always dream the biggest dreams that you possibly can. You'll be a star. You'll be so far up there that it'll be outrageous and incredible in your life. So with that being said, I'm so glad to be here today on Grown Talk Cocktail Fridays. I'm Sonia Lorraine, certified lifestyle relationship counselor, educator, motivational speaker, and by far grateful to be your host. So I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Don't worry, we will be live and we will have the cocktails flowing, honey. Have a great weekend, celebrate yourself, and I'll see you soon. And remember, stay safe, stay home, and always be fabulous.